Welcome to the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show, brought to you by Community Bank, live at the Alumni House, featuring head coach John Perry. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, 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 bang. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, 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 bang. Host, the voice of the Pirates, Errol Palmer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show, brought to you by Community Bank. We're live inside the Alumni House here at the Holiday Inn at Trustmark Park, where we gather each and every week. We talk about last Friday night's football game for the Pearl Pirates and the upcoming game each and every week. Head coach John Perry will join me, and we will look at the victory over Mendenhall, where the Pirates came out ahead by a score of 41-17. to We'll talk tonight with Sam Thompson and Demoris Brown. Demoris Brown, of course, the wide receiver for the Pirates, is leading the team in reception yards. Sam Thompson, the young sophomore who's making a statement for himself, as we call him the human highlight film. We'll talk to both of them tonight. Then head coach John Perry will join me once again, and we'll talk about tomorrow night's game as the Bastrop, Louisiana Rams will travel to Ray Rogers Stadium to take on the Pirates. It's going to be a fun night here at the Alumni House. A lot of great food, a lot of good conversation as we talk Pearl Pirate football right here on the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show brought to you by Community Bank. Guarantee checking. What's that? I've just found our new checking account. Is that so? <laughs> well, with the changes in banking, this one's like no other. Really? They reimburse all ATM fees. What about debit card and checks? They're both free, plus free online banking with bill pay. Well, do they pay interest? Uh-huh, on all balances. Money orders, traveler's checks? All included. Well, I don't know of a bank that has ever... With guaranteed checking from Community Bank, they really are like no other bank you know. Hungry for sports or just plain hungry? Then you need to visit the best sports bar in Jackson that isn't in Jackson. The Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar located inside the Holiday Inn Trustmark Park in Pearl. Enjoy the privacy of a game with friends without all the noise of an arena type sports bar. With over 27 video stations, you'll never miss a basket, home run, or seventh inning stretch. Choose a booth with your own private video monitor. Get wound up with some delicious hot wings or fill up on a tasty burger. Come on in. They'll treat you like a pro at the Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar. Back to the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show brought to you by Community Bank. We're live inside the Alumni House here at the Holiday Inn at Trustmark Park. I'm DP. Joining me now, Head Coach John Perry. Coach Perry, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Coach, it's always more fun to talk on a Thursday night after a big victory on the Friday night previously. Last week, we played Mendenhall. We come out with a 41-17 victory. Overall, first off, your impression of that night's game? I thought it was great. I was proud of the way the kids played, played really hard. Uh, I thought Mendenhall played really, really hard. You know, there were times where uh, maybe they could have laid down a little bit, but I tell you what, they played extremely hard. Uh, you know, and it was not a 41-17 game. To me, it didn't feel like a 41-17 right. game because it, uh, it was a tough game, but I was really proud of the way our kids played. Played really hard, played pretty good. You know, had a few too many penalties, some of them legit, some of them not legit, but uh, I was overall, I was proud of the way we played. It's kind of interesting that you say that, that it didn't feel like a 41-17 game, because that was exactly my thoughts from the booth, is that it was close. It was nip and tuck, and every time they made a big play, it was like, oh, no, they're fixing to come back That's and right. win. Then I look at the scoreboard, and wait a minute, we're up by two scores. And it just because it didn't feel that way throughout the game. Uh, what would you attribute that to, you think, that it didn't have that feel of a 34-point victory? I think you got to take victory. your hat off to, to Mendenhall. I yeah. mean, that's a place that uh, has some tradition. You know, those guys have got daddies and cousins and uncles <laughs> who played on really, really good football teams. You know, there's some tradition in that place, and those kids play really hard. You know, I mean, that's what they're supposed to do, and they did, you know, and they had some really good athletes. I thought those two wideouts were as good as anybody that we'll go up against all year long, and you know, sometimes when you get two scores up late in the ball game, uh, playing fast, the other team gets tired, and, and, and they tend to fold uh, fold up a little bit, but they didn't do that. I mean, they played as hard, you know, on the last play as they did the first play, and, you know, that's a, a compliment to them. Let's take a look at a few of the highlights from the game. The first one to look at, probably biggest highlight this season, uh, Demoris Brown catches a 74-yard pass out of the hands of L.D. Carpenter. A good-looking play here. You know, they had him, they, they, I guess what they called themselves, double-teaming him, but, you know, when they didn't 
the outside linebacker just kind of standing out there. You know, it didn't really do us a whole lot of good, but uh, it was a great throw, obviously a great catch and a good run. And that's, you know, I mean, that's a big play. Anytime you can have a, a, a touchdown reception of that magnitude, that's big in a ball game. It didn't look like anything fancy to me. It looked like he just comes off the line of scrimmage running a, a post route straight or fly, a flag right down the, the you line. You know what, in, in his third and 15, I had a guy one time tell me a long time ago, said, you know, coach, when it's third and 15, why don't you just throw it to your best player instead of running a draw? Or, you know, as coaches will run screens or it's like, ah, so I've always kind of kept that in mind, man. If, we, if it's third and long, why not just take a chance? You never know. Well, and that one worked out really good. He just takes off now the numbers right. and, and LD just throws one up and That's he right. outruns everybody. The next one we want to look at. Uh, another good pass play. This one's going to go to Malik McNair, 39-yard pickup coming off the uh, right side. We knew as, a, as a aggressive as they were that if we would fake like we were running an outside uh, speed sweep type play that that guy would come and we'd be able to throw it right in there behind him. And, you know, it was a good throw, good catch, and a nice run. And what I was most proud of was he really took the ball when it was uh, when, when they come got him from behind. One thing I've heard uh, Coach World talk about to his receivers quite often is make the first guy miss. That's right. Uh, and he made the catch, he made the first guy miss, and that gives him an extra 20 yards. He did, play. and then took care of the football after that, and that's what it's all about. The next play we want to look at is another good pass play. This one, Seamus Tucker. We've got three different receivers really get into play. Seamus will come off the left side here on the top of the screen. And they're getting better. You know, two of those guys, Malik and Seamus, this is their first year to ever play. So every single day they're getting better. And there's going to be a point in time where uh, they're going to be really, really good. And they're going to need to be because there will be a lot of attention paid to the Morris at some point in time. But as we well know, if you have somebody on the other side, it's hard to go over there and, and double him every play. Coach, one of the things about this play, it looks to me this is a real simple route. He just literally comes off the side, a little short slant. That's right. Uh, and a quick hit. They were giving us the, the that slant area. You know, the flats out there was wide open due to the way they was playing. And so we threw it out there a good bit. And that's, that's a route that we throw every day probably, you know, 25, 50 times a day. You know, them quarterbacks do that a lot. So, you know, we're pretty good at that. It's a hard route to defend. Uh, unless the corner's playing him tight. Of course, we're going to get burned on one in That's the right. game where a, a defensive lineman jumps up and knocks it down right. and catches it because a pump fake there would have fixed that one. Though. That's right. But, uh, it's a good route and a good pass, obviously. The next one to look at is Ladarius makes a good read, look to me like, on a three-yard carry in for a touchdown here. That's right. We're running inside zone. Uh, you know, he's got a couple options on the play. The right tackle gets beat on the play. There would not have been much had he give it, but, you know, he pulled it and, uh, you know, and he don't pull it a whole lot, you know, but when he when he gets down there and, you know, he's not pulled it, we probably ran that play ten times before that, you know, they kind of take their focus off of him. The next one to look at is uh, a mistake by Ladarius Carpenter, uh, but it's one that an offensive lineman gets an opportunity to do something that most offensive linemen don't get a chance to do, but, but uh, LD is going to drop back to pass, uh, get rushed, throw it into coverage, and this ball is going to be intercepted. We thought they might uh, pay a little too much attention to DeMore, so we might be able to sneak one to Jordan, and he underthrew it. Uh, but then when it was intercepted, like, wow, what a tackle. You know, that was pretty impressive. You know, you're, you're mad because you just turned the ball over. But I, I honestly was thinking, I don't know if anybody will tackle him because we're not – on offense, we ain't the best tacklers in the world, you know. Now, does that um, make you want to put Trey in as a defensive tackle at some point? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not really. We'll, we'll say he got lucky on that one, but he did make That's a good right. hit downfield. I uh, do have another one to look at. This one is a good run, uh, probably the longest run of the night. Jordan Wright takes it from 26 yards out, and once he gets through, he's gone. One thing we've gotten pretty good at is if we can – you know, if we if we can catch them not lining up to a formation or whatever, you know, we get a chance for a big play. And right there, they kind of overplayed, you know, the, the end over formation, was able to run the counter trap back away. And when he gets his shoulder pads downhill, he's a, he's a load to tackle. No doubt about that. Coach, and then the defense has really stepped up all season long. This last one, Chris Cooper takes one a couple of yards deep in the end zone. It's going to take it 77 or well, 79 if you give him the two yards deep. Uh, but a pretty good interception and return. Yeah, I tell you what, it, it looked like it was going to be a touchdown. The ball was a little bit underthrown, and I don't know that he wasn't beaten a little bit on the play, but whatever. He made the play, uh, made a great return after the play. I thought he was going to score there for a little while. I think he got kind of tired. But <laughs> that was a big play, and that was a, a big you know, change in the game right there. You know, If they go in and score right there, uh, I think they get within one score, and you never know. One of the things, Coach, I've instinctively learned to do over the years when I see a play like that, 
I automatically look behind it. That's right. I start looking for some, uh, you know, That's right. laundry down on the field, right. as we call it. As a coach, is that one of the things that you start looking for after that? Say, wait a minute, did we have a bad block? Well, no doubt I get about it. Yeah, I guess that's the uh, pessimistic side because you <laughs> expect sometimes somebody to do something, and we do it from time to time. But when it happens, you know, we always take them in there and show it to them on film right. and explain to them why we don't do that. You know, I mean, uh, good football teams don't do that. You know, good football teams, Alabama's not going to get a penalty for hitting right. behind the ball and stuff like that. You know, and uh, if we're if we're going to be one of the better teams. We got to do things right. So I was glad that it didn't happen. 302 yards through the air last week. I looked back just on our max prep stats. That's the most we've had in a single game. I know since like 2000. I didn't go back prior right. to that. You may have. How did that offense stack up? You think as far as the Darius throwing the ball? You know, I mean, it was as good of probably throwing uh, and catching as we we have done. You know, I mean, they were giving us some stuff, and you know, 300 yards is a lot. Mm -hmm. But of that 300 yards, Demoris Brown had 200 of them. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, he had he had 70 something on one, and he had another one that was a pretty distance. So that helps your total right there. But I thought we threw it really well. I thought we caught it well, you know, and, and the offensive line did a pretty good job of protecting, you know. And if that's the thing about it, if they're going to give you certain areas of the field wide open, you got to be a good enough football team that you can take it, you know. And right now we can, uh, we can do that. Anytime you put up 466 yards on offense, you got to feel pretty happy. That's right, and you ought to you ought to win if you put up that many points and you know that that many yards. Coach, we're going to talk to a couple of players. And before we do, I just want to give a quick shout. Some of you may be wondering, Coach Perry here tonight, uh, not in his normal football attire. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Mr. Smithhart, uh, Death, and his family. I know you're heading over there tonight. That's right. Uh, anytime we lose a, a member of the Pirate family, uh, we always uh, want to give a shout out and do give a shout out to Mr. Smithhart and his family. That's and their right. Loss. No doubt about it. All right, that's head coach John Perry. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to be joined by Sam Thompson and Demoris Brown. We'll talk about their night. And then Coach Perry will join me once again as we talk about the upcoming game tomorrow night with the Bastrop, Louisiana Rams. You're watching the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show brought to you by Community Bank live from the Alumni House inside the Holiday Inn. Hmm, Community Bank Guaranteed Checking. What's that? I've just found our new checking account. Is that so? <laughs> well, with the changes in banking, this one's like no other. Really? They reimburse all ATM fees. What about debit card and checks? They're both free, plus free online banking with bill pay. Well, do they pay interest? Uh-huh, on all balances. Money orders, traveler's checks? All included. Well, I don't know of a bank that has ever... With guaranteed checking from Community Bank, they really are like no other bank you know. Hungry for sports or just plain hungry? Then you need to visit the best sports bar in Jackson that isn't in Jackson. The Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar located inside the Holiday Inn Trustmark Park in Pearl. Enjoy the privacy of a game with friends without all the noise of an arena type sports bar. With over 27 video stations, you'll never miss a basket, home run, or seventh inning stretch. Choose a booth with your own private video monitor. Get wound up with some delicious hot wings or fill up on a tasty burger. Come on in. They'll treat you like a pro at the Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar. Welcome back to the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show brought to you by Community Bank. We're live inside the Alumni House here at the Holiday Inn at Trustmark Park. I'm DP. Joining me now, Demoris Brown and Sam Thompson. Demoris, Sam, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you, thank you sir. All right, let's first off, I want to go to Sam. Sam, you're a sophomore. You're playing corner, uh, defensive back. We've given you a nickname. You probably hadn't heard this as you've gone back and figured out to watch a replay of the game, but we've called you now the human highlight reel. Uh, started off the season, I think you had 10 plays in the first game. Three of those were coach-selected highlights. That's, That's pretty right. strong when you're able to do that. So tell me about the way you like to hit and how all of a sudden we've given you the nickname Human Highlight. Man, just every time I see somebody coming and it's like perfect angle, I'm like, yeah, it's a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, I just, I just give it all I got and just try to... Make the highlight when they come. Well, you have done that quite a few times this year. As I've looked at some stats, you've got 17 tackles, 16 solo. Uh, you've done a good job in, in some game-changing hits, I think, at times, uh, where guys look like they're making some yards, getting free, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes number 28 uh, and lays a pretty substantial blow. When you get that opportunity, do you want that quarterback or that receiver or that running back, do you want them to stop and remember, hey, 2-8, I better yeah. avoid him? <laughs> Right, right. I do want them to remember that. So next time they come to my side, they'll be like, oh, I'm just going to go out of bounds. I don't want to <laughs> get hit no more. DeMars, this past Friday night, you worked pretty hard. You had 204 yards, 74 on one catch for a touchdown uh, on the season. 
Uh, got you with 430 yards. Uh, pretty good job this year catching the ball. Tell me about you and Ladarius and how y'all work together uh, to be able to make that many catches. I mean, I think me and LD, we have a good connection. When, like, I break on the line, we, like, I think he already know he's going to throw it to me, but we have a good connection, I think, and we connect real, real well. When the first long pass play this past Friday night, 74 yards, uh, talking to Coach Perry about it just a moment ago, it was really a simple route. looked like you just came off. You were on the numbers. Uh, you just ran down the numbers. The guy didn't go with you, so you get three or four steps on him before LD throws it. Uh, he throws it out in front. You're able to catch it pretty much in stride. How early in that play did you see that coming and realize you were going to be that open and it was going to be a six? I saw it before it even happened because the um, linebacker, he wasn't even like on me. Like okay. The safety was like playing 12 yards deep, and when I ran the fade, he was in the backfield trying to watch the run, so I knew I had him from the start. So you knew all it was, as long as LD put the ball in the right place, it, it was, was going to be a six. Down. When down. you get last, the last couple of years, you've been a big part of this offense with uh, DJ Thompson two years ago as a primary receiver as a sophomore. You made a lot of great plays running a little inside sweep where you come through and get the ball in the backfield. Last year, Trey Harvey was one of our top receivers. You were right there with him, still running the ball a lot, catching the ball a lot. This year, Coach Perry's kind of looking at you as the go-to guy. Do you feel any extra pressure as the go-to guy this year? Not really. I just feel like when Coach them need me to get a play, I got to get it. I don't want to let them down. If I let them down, I let my team down, and I don't want to feel like that. Now, you're in on punt return, kickoff return, you're a pass receiver, and you're a runner. If Coach Perry says, I'm only going to let you do one of those four, which one are you going to pick? Probably catching. I like to go get it. I mean, as, as a receiver? Okay, so not as a punt returner or a kick returner? No. Nope. Okay, you want to be the, the receiver, let LD throw it out there. Sam, you got an opportunity to catch a quarterback in the backfield, not looking at you, or catch a receiver coming across the middle, which is your favorite? Uh, quarterback in the backfield, not looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> want to get him on that corner oh, blitz yeah. and not, not see you coming. Oh, yeah. I like it. He's Demaris Brown. He's Sam Thompson, our receiver and cornerback for the Pearl Pirates, a senior and a sophomore, but these two guys will help lead the Pirates, hopefully, to Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're going to take a break. When we come back, head coach John Perry will rejoin me, and we'll talk about the upcoming game against the Bastrop, Louisiana Rams. You're watching the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show, brought to you by Community Bank, live from the Alumni House. Hmm, Community Bank Guaranteed Checking. What's that? I've just found our new checking account. Is that so? <laughs> well, with the changes in banking, this one's like no other. Really? They reimburse all ATM fees. What about debit card and checks? They're both free, plus free online banking with bill pay. Well, do they pay interest? Uh-huh, on all balances. Money orders, traveler's checks? All included. Well, I don't know of a bank that has ever... With guaranteed checking from Community Bank, they really are like no other bank you know. Hungry for sports or just plain hungry? Then you need to visit the best sports bar in Jackson that isn't in Jackson. The Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar located inside the Holiday Inn Trustmark Park in Pearl. Enjoy the privacy of a game with friends without all the noise of an arena type sports bar. With over 27 video stations, you'll never miss a basket, home run, or seventh inning stretch. Choose a booth with your own private video monitor. Get wound up with some delicious hot wings or fill up on a tasty burger. Come on in. They'll treat you like a pro at the Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar. Welcome back to the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show brought to you by Community Bank. We're live inside the Alumni House here at the Holiday Inn at Trustmark Park where we are each and every week. Now joining me, Head Coach John Perry as we talk about the Mar Knights game as the Pirates will take on the Bastrop, Louisiana Rams. Coach, I look back, have we ever played this team as far as you know? No. So, never played this team. A new rivalry possibly beginning, a new uh, setup of games. One of the things, of course, originally this was supposed to be the open date. When right. people looked at the schedule, it came out last spring through the summer. MHSAA at some point, I think it was in July, that said you don't have to have an open date for 5A and 6A. Your immediate thought was to schedule a game. Right. Why would you rather do that as opposed to have the open date? I, you know, I've never really liked the open date. I mean, I'm a football coach, and we uh, have football players, and we like to play. You know, in each of the last two years, we've lost a player to injury the week of practice, and we did not even have a game. And it just makes me sick to go out there. And you know, remember two years ago we lost Darius right. for a couple of weeks due to a concussion out there practicing for. You know, I don't. We didn't even have a game, so you, I right. never really figured out how to handle the bye week. You know, right. you call around, you do, try this, and it just didn't work. 
well, I do know this. We'll go out there and play that we're practicing for a reason. And, and I wanted to try to find somebody out of state. Just I mm -hmm. thought that would be fun, you know, and, and getting to travel next year to go to Bastrop. I think that'll be fun for our fans. And, you know, I mean, we play football. That's what we do, yeah. you know, and, and it gives us a chance to uh, be better, you know. I mean, we're going to get a chance to practice and play and, and go out there and, and compete against somebody that's pretty good. And uh, hopefully at the end of the day, the goal is to win a 5A state championship. And I think this is better for us than not playing and not knowing what to do. And, you know, so this, I think, will help us with our goals. And plus, there is a pretty good sporting goods store there in Bastion, too, that I get to catalog all the time. That's so right. I'm excited to get a That's chance right. to go over there and see that next year. Coach, uh, one of your philosophies I know as well always is you want to play up in these games prior to region. You, you don't want to go just look out right. for, for easy wins. You right. want to play tough teams. This Bastrop team historically has been a really tough team and, and, a, and a better team in Louisiana. Talk to me about what you know about this team and what we're looking at tomorrow. You know, I mean, when we signed up to play them, I had heard of them. I knew, you know, Randall Mackey played there. I knew some of the players that had come through that place. You know, Coach Bradshaw, who coached there for a long time, very successful uh, high school football coach. You know, and I know I've, I've read some things that over the past 10 years, they're one of the top programs in the state of Louisiana. I right. think they've lost 18 games in the past 10 years, you know, so they want to stretch there three or four years. They didn't lose a game, won three or four state championships in a row. So historically, they are a really good uh, Louisiana high school football team. But, you know, that's kind of what we wanted to do. I mean, that's uh, go out there and play and let's see what happens and, and we'll, we'll be better no matter what. Coaches, we've looked at this team now a little bit. They won their first game by a score, I believe it was 55-13. They lost their second game 63-8. to uh, So when you look at that, you say, when you see the first game, you say, man, this team's good. Then you see the second game and you say, man, this team's bad. What do you look at from a coach when you see those kind of scores? Obviously, you've got to look at the opponent. And did the exact same thing you did. I mean, I stuck that first film in, I watched it, and I thought, well, we done got ourselves into, maybe the open week would have been better. And then you stick that second film in, you're like, huh. So then I started trying to research, okay, how, how good is Huntington? Right. You know, how good is Bird? And, and what I found out was Huntington is not very good, and Bird is one of the better schools in Louisiana. So, you know, that is a huge extreme, but, you know, it's kind of like us last year. I mean, exactly. you, you get smoked by – Brandon, then you turn around and play well. So you never know. I mean, they're going to be a good football team with good athletes and good players. And uh, that game last Friday, as I, I would kind of describe it, is just a nightmare. I mean, they were not – it was not a 63-8 to eight game. Right. They had four or five blocks punt or mm -hmm. kicked it into themselves or dropped it or, you know, who's ever going to have – you know, I've always heard the stat that if you have a block – a punt blocked, you're you're about ninety percent chance of losing the game. Well, if you have four or five blocks, you're <laughs> you're guaranteed you're going to lose. You know, so uh, that didn't work out good, and they didn't. You know, uh, and Bird is really good on top of that. So we don't really know. I mean, we we have no idea what's going to happen other than at seven o'clock we're going to kick off and play a team that has tradition, a team that has athletes, and a team that we figure after being beat like that will would have a rough week of practice and we'll, and we'll be ready to play. One of the things, coaches, and I know you've studied a lot of game film. I've seen the three where they've got the Jamboree and then the game against right. Huntington, the game against Bird. Uh, when I've looked at that, one of the things that stands out to me, they've got a pretty good quarterback. Right. The guy's a pretty good athlete. He wears number one. That's right. he's, he's a threat to run the ball. He also throws a pretty good pass. He's got a f over 50% completion right. rate in those two games. He's got a couple of really good receiver targets, a number right. five and number eight. And they got a really good running back, number yep. three. Yep. Uh, so, And I know you've looked at that. So from a defensive standpoint, what do you feel like the Pirates are going to need to do Friday night and able to slow down those four or five key guys? Well, I mean, you got you to keep, you know, the quarterback in the pocket, you know, because he will, uh, when everything breaks down, he'll take off running. So you got to be able to, to manage him, but you got to know where number eight is. I mean, he seems to be the best receiver. Uh, he's kind of the go-to guy, you know, and I think, you know, he's the key to the whole thing. You got to be able to stop him. You got to get some pressure on the quarterback, you know, and you got to tackle him. They run a lot of tunnel screens and key screens and, and flip it out there right now and try to get those guys in space, you know, and so we got to be able to tackle well. Uh, and I feel pretty good about us on defense. We're playing really good right now, and, you know, they do something that we have not seen yet. I mean, they are going to spread the field. Right. They're going to snap it as fast as they can snap it. They're going to try to get 100 plays, and, you know, we're going to have to adjust on the run, and that will be that will be a little bit of a challenge because there will not be time to sit around and, make all the calls that you normally make from a defensive standpoint because their head's going to be on a little bit of a swivel as well. 
when that happens, when you have to adjust on the fly like that, how important then does the role of a Johan Marin or a Chris Chambers uh, on the field to make some assignments and changes on the fly from a player standpoint? It's important, but you know, and that, that's kind of when your your practice habits come into play because there ain't a whole lot of coaching. I mean, if you get that ball. Uh, on the opposite hash from your sideline, and they're snapping it fast. You're not communicating with anybody on that field. I right. mean, they're they're going off of whatever they did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know. And, and that's kind of what we hope sometimes when we're snapping or trying to play sure. fast is that you know we take the sideline out of it and make the kids play football. And uh, you can't sometimes trust the kids as much as you can trust the coaches. But that's you know if you watch college football, it seems to be the going thing. You know, as great as. Nick Saban is and Alabama is. I mean, they had trouble, you know, stopping Texas A&M, although, you know, Johnny, we don't have a Johnny football. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just the way it's kind of right. going. Coach, defensively, uh, from them looking at their defense, obviously they gave up 63 points last week, 13 even that the week before. So they're giving up 76 points in two games. Our offense has at times looked real good. Against Clinton, we put up 35 points in the second half. We put up 41 points with over 466 yards this past week. Do you feel like our offense is starting to come of age with a sophomore quarterback and making some things happen with some experience at running back and receiver? I think so. I mean, I think we're starting to get better, you know, and it all started with the guys up front. You know I mean? When they struggle, everything's going to struggle, mm -hmm. you know, and when, uh, you know, the branding game, we got dominated up front, right. and, and that's what happened, you know, so uh, it starts with them guys, but we are getting better. I mean, we, we've got to, you know, you got to kind of identify yourself as a football team, and I think we are better when we start, you know, trying to run the football. You know, Jordan Wright's a load to tackle. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a 200-pound guy that uh, the first guy's not going to tackle him. He's going to run really hard, and then I think he opens up everything else outside of that because you, you do have to, you know, put enough guys in the box to tackle him, and then when you do, you know, you leave some of those areas out there open and, and LD is getting better and better, you know, taking some of the pressure off of him, you know, having four or five decisions on every play, you know, probably it's not the smartest thing in the world. So it kind of helps him out, you know, when you can play action pass and uh, he throws the ball or, you know, really well. So, you know, we're, we're getting better. I know that. Well, you talk about that. And, of course, Jordan, 500 yards right down on the season, uh, averaging five yards a carry. If you give him the ball enough, as you said, they're going to collapse and right. got to stop him. That, of course, DeBoris got a lot of experience. Right. Seamus and Malik gaining experience. We're looking right. better from that end. Uh, special teams, I know Johan was punting some this week in practice. Uh, expect to see him back punting tomorrow night. Yeah, he should be fine. He's, his knee is about well, and he had banged up his wrist a little bit, but he, he's, he's able to catch it and all that kind of stuff. So he'll be back punting, you know, which we, we got a lot of faith in him. Uh, and then special teams, we, we other than the – kickoff you know that we let them return which right. was just you know that was poor tackling and that's you know we're better than that uh you know so we've worked really hard on that this week good deal coach good luck in the game tomorrow night thank hopefully you. we'll be talking about another victory no doubt thank you he's head coach john perry is tomorrow night the, the pearl pirates will take on the bastrop louisiana rams right here at ray rogers stadium we're going to take a break when we come back we'll wrap up tonight's show on our pearl pirate football coaches show brought to you by community bank Community Bank Guaranteed Checking. What's that? I've just found our new checking account. Is that so? <laughs> well, with the changes in banking, this one's like no other. Really? They reimburse all ATM fees. What about debit card and checks? They're both free, plus free online banking with bill pay. Well, do they pay interest? Uh-huh, on all balances. Money orders, traveler's checks? All included. Well, I don't know of a bank that has ever... With Guaranteed Checking from Community Bank, they really are like no other bank you know. Hungry for sports or just plain hungry? Then you need to visit the best sports bar in Jackson that isn't in Jackson. The Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar located inside the Holiday Inn Trustmark Park in Pearl. Enjoy the privacy of a game with friends without all the noise of an arena-type sports bar. With over 27 video stations, you'll never miss a basket, home run, or seventh inning stretch. Choose a booth with your own private video monitor. Get wound up with some delicious hot wings or fill up on a tasty burger. Come on in. They'll treat you like a pro at the Alumni House Restaurant and Sports Bar.
To the Pearl Pirate Football Coaches Show, brought to you by Community Bank, live here at the Alumni House. Tomorrow night, the Pirates will play the third home game in a row as Bastrop, Louisiana comes traveling to Ray Rogers Stadium. Kickoff is scheduled for 7 p.m. Our broadcast begins at 6 p.m. with High School Game Day, hosted by Kristen Wyndham, Bryant May, along with Greg Flynn. Then at 6.30, Justin Bennett will join me in the booth as we break down tomorrow night's game. We'll let you know what we think are the keys to a Pearl Pirate victory tomorrow night against the Bastrop, Louisiana Rams. If you can't make it out to Ray Rogers Stadium, by all means, join us right here on the Pirate Media Network at PMB TV, Channel 20 on Comcast Cable, throughout Hines, Madison, and Rankin Counties. Also on WPBP 104.5 FM, The Pirate. Or you can catch us on the Internet by going to www.pearlbroadcasting.com. We look forward to seeing you at Ray Rogers Stadium or right here on the Pirate Media Network tomorrow night for the Pearl Pirates taking on the Rams from Bastrop, Louisiana. Thanks to Frank Hutton out in the trailer, Alex Hutton on the camera in here. Until next time, I'm DP saying good night, everybody.